Good evening. Here we are, time for our Sunday evening studies in Exodus. Second book of the Old Testament, chapter 31, Exodus 31. Moses is up on the mountain with God, and the people's going crazy down in the valley. It's actually chapter 32. <clears throat> when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, he's been up there for a while, about he spends 40 days up there. He's been gone over a month, and the people's getting worried. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods. Remember, they come from Egypt. It was every, the God for everything. So Moses ain't come back. They don't know what's happened. Told them Aaron said, Why don't you make us a god? <laughs> Which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what's happened to him. We don't know what's happened to him, what's become of him. He's been gone for over a month. Apparently he ain't coming back. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. Remember they spoiled the Egyptians when they left, took their gold, and that's probably where these earrings and things came from. <clears throat> And he received them, they, they did so, they brought them to Aaron for, and he received them at their hand, and Aaron fat, took all that gold, he fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf. Now there's a lot in that line, see, he, he put it all together and he melted it down, he, took, he fashioned a, a, a god for them out of it, and there's a lot of work in that. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt which brought you out of the land of Egypt. They had a pillar of fire by day, a pillar of smoke by, or smoke by day, fire by night. And this is the ultimate blasphemy, is literally taking the things that God did and attributing it to the devil or these false gods. In verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. He's going to make him a place to worship this pseudo-god. And Aaron made a proclamation. Not only is he making an altar before it, he's going to preach before this God. He says in his proclamation, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they, I think he's talking about the, the golden calf. <laughs> and they rose up early on the morrow, and they offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, now the scene shifts. We're going from the valley with Aaron back up on the mountain with Moses and God. Joshua is somewhere up there. He goes at least part way. And the Lord said to Moses, Get thee down for thy people. If you got your Bible, mark that. The Lord says, Moses, get down because your people. God didn't call them his people. They're Moses' people when they're acting up. Get thee down for thy people, which thou, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt. They've corrupted themselves. That's what we've got to watch out for, corrupting ourselves before God. God tells Moses, they've turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They've made them a molten calf, and they've worshipped it. They've sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it's a stiff-necked people. They're rebellious. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them or destroy them. And Moses, I'll make of thee a great nation. Now, they're literally sinners who have fallen into the hands of an angry God. And God says, I think I may just destroy every one of them, Moses, and I'll do like I did with Abraham. I'll make of you a great nation. I'll just wipe all them out. And Moses interceded for the people. He besought the Lord, his God. And Moses prayed to the Lord. He said to him, says, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Moses was pretty bold, wasn't it? God said, they're your people, Moses. And Moses said, now they're your, your people, and you're the one that brought them out. Why does, your anger wax, why does your wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand. Then Moses actually uses reason with God. He's reasoning. He says, oh, think about what, it, what the Egyptians would say, Lord. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, 
for mischief did he bring them out? What kind of a God would you be in their eyes? They'd think that you tricked these people. To slay them in the mountains. He just brought them out to kill them out in the wilderness and to consume them from the face of the earth. Moses pleads with God, says, Turn from your fierce wrath and repent, which literally means change your mind of this evil against thy people. And you know, that's what the cross did for you and I, that we're sinners in the hands of an angry God. But Jesus interceded on our behalf by living the life we couldn't live and going to the cross to have God's judgment for us poured out upon him. And it turned God's wrath away from us because Jesus took God's wrath upon him. 13, then Moses still praying to the Lord says, Now remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom thou swearest by thy, own, by thy own self you'd make a great nation out of them. Remember, you said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I've spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. You promised that to them, Lord. And the Lord repented, or changed his mind, of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned, and he went down from the mountain, and the two tables, two tablets of testimony were in his hand. He's carrying these Ten Commandments with him, two big flat rocks, two tables, two tablets. And the tablets were written on both of their sides, front and back. He was conserving rock, he was conserving paper. Right? On the one side and on the other side were they written. And Moses didn't write it. He says these were written by the very finger of God. And the tables were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God. Graven upon the tables, engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard, see now Moses has picked up Joshua on the way back down. And they get close to camp. Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted. And he said to Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. There must be a war going on. And he got closer and he said, it's, it's the voice of them. It's not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither it's the voice of them that cry for being overcome. He says, but it's the noise of them that sing. It said like a lot of singing going on, do I hear? And it came to pass as soon as he had came nigh to the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. People dancing naked around this calf. And Moses' anger waxed hot. It's what God was mad about up on the mountain. See, he saw it from there. And he cast the tables out of his hands and he broke them beneath the mount. Now, Moses was all right to be angry. But it's like the New Testament tells you and I, it says, uh, be angry. That's a God-given emotion. You have to get angry sometimes, but you've got to be careful with that anger. If, you're, if you don't ever let yourself get angry, then it seeps out in a slow burn, which is called depression. It's a lot of people's problem. They just need to get mad. But uh, when you get mad, now when you get angry, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Because you're real close to getting in trouble and losing control when you get angry. And that's what happened to Moses. He, he took the Ten Commandments that were written with the finger of God and he threw them down and busted them in pieces in his anger. Now he's going to have to go back up and get a redo with God. But uh, he, he messed up here, I'm saying. He break them beneath the mountain. 20. And he took the calf. This is kind of a creative punishment. <laughs> Moses took the calf which they had made and he burned it in the fire and he ground it to powder and then he strode that powder up on the water and he made every one of them drink that God, <laughs> made Israel drink of it. And Moses said to Aaron, what did this people do unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, uh, let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Don't get mad at me, Moses. Thou knowest this, people, that they're set on mischief. You know how they are, brother. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, they, they said, He's brought us up out of the land of Egypt, and we don't know what's become of him. And he said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. Any gold you got left, break it off. And uh, or Moses is saying to that, or Aaron's telling Moses what happens to him. So they gave it to me. I took their gold. They broke it off. I, I cast it into the fire, and out comes this calf. <laughs> so innocent, like, like just I just put it in the fire, and poof, out comes this calf. <laughs> there came out this calf, and they began to worship it. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked to their shame among their enemies, they're dancing naked around the golden calf when he comes off there. So Moses stood in the gate of the camp, 
And he said, uh, who's on the Lord's side? Now, if I said that to you right now, who's on the Lord's side? Well, I hope you'd come and stand with me and not stay over there with those who are perishing. Who's on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout this camp, and slay or kill every man, his brother, every man, his companion, every man, he said, we got to kill all of them. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell that day about 3,000 men. Now you say, well, that sounds like an awful harsh and cruel punishment for it, but think of it this way. It's only by the grace of God and the interceding of Moses on behalf of the people that they weren't all killed. Only 3,000 of them died. Some of them lived. For Moses has said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Which that word consecrate, it, uh, in this word in the Hebrew translated consecrate here, literally means fill your hands. It's the John Wayne line from one of those John Wayne movies <laughs> that uh, you might remember the line. I can't quote the rest of it. Fill your hands. That's right after they call him a one-eyed fat man. Remember that? So it means fill your hands with their swords. They didn't have guns. Every man upon his son, upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Or do what God says and God's going to bless us. If you rebel against God, all you can look for is a fearful and certain judgment. That's still a New Testament principle, isn't it? And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said to the people, You've sinned a great sin. And now I will go up to the Lord. Peradventure, perhaps, I shall make an atonement for your sin. Or if I go up and talk to the Lord again, maybe uh, we can make amends for you. You had to go back up there and get the Ten Commandments again, too. And Moses returned to the Lord, and he said, uh, Now, I, I don't find this in the Bible. Moses wrote this under the inspiration of God, right? But... I wonder if the first thing Moses said, Lord, uh, you know, I broke them Ten Commandments. So I need a new set. But I didn't break them the way they did. Right? So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and they've made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and Moses says, If you won't, if you don't forgive their sin, just kill me too. If not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written, the book of life. Here, not to be confused with the Lamb's book of life, but the book of the living. Moses, uh, Moses is identifying with his people still. You've got to give him credit for that. They've done a really bad thing. But he said, if you won't forgive them, Lord, the, then just kill me too. And the Lord said to Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Every man's going to be responsible for their own sin with God. Therefore now, Moses is being spoken to by God in verse 34. Therefore now go, lead the people to the place of which I've spoken unto thee. Let's carry on what we started out to do. And behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Don't, think that, don't, don't you let them think that they're not going to still have to answer for this because uh, sin sets things in motion. And the Lord plagued the people because they had made the calf which Aaron made. Or as the Bible says, uh, sin is a reproach unto any people. And that includes you and I. See you next week for chapter 33.